I was horrified when I read that a Spanish company is hoping to open the first commercial octopus farm in 2023. Anyone who has seen the amazing documentary My Octopus Teacher can tell you just how awesome these creatures are. They are highly intelligent, with a great sense of curiosity and highly developed problem solving skills. If you have not seen it, I highly recommend it. The demand to eat octopus has rocketed in recent years. Between 2010 and 2019, the value of the global octopus trade went up from $1.3 billion to $2.72 billion. The countries that eat the most octopus are Korea, Japan and Mediterranean countries such as Spain, Portugal, Greece and Italy. In Korea, octopuses are eaten alive. I simply cannot imagine that. It is also becoming more popular in countries such as America, Australia and China. The landings of wild octopus are decreasing, so research has been funded to find a way of farming these creatures. It was thought that octopuses would be good candidates for large-scale commercial aquaculture, as they are fast-growing, have a high food conversion rate, high protein content and high fecundity. And of course, they are in demand, so it is economically viable. Attempts at octopus farming have been occurring around the world, in the Mediterranean, Asia, South America, Australia, Japan and the US. A Spanish company has beaten its rivals and claims to have perfected the conditions needed for industrial scale breeding and the farm is just waiting on environmental approval from local authorities. The aim is for the farm to produce 3,000 tonnes per year by 2026 for domestic and international food chains and it will generate hundreds of jobs on the island of Gran Canaria. However, there is growing concern among scientists that study octopuses that farming them will cause the octopuses a lot of misery and stress and believe that octopuses are not suited to a life in captivity and mass production for both ethical and ecological reasons. I am going to focus on the ethical issues that surrounding the farming of octopuses. In November 2021, the London School of Economics and Political Science published a report entitled Review of the Evidence of Sentience in Cephalopod Mollusks and Decapod Crustaceans. In light of this review, there was an amendment to the UK's Animal Welfare Sentience Bill, which recognised lobsters, octopuses and crabs as sentient beings. The definition of sentience used by the authors is, and I quote, the capacity to have feelings, such as feelings of pain, pleasure, hunger, thirst, warmth, joy, comfort and excitement. It is not simply the capacity to feel pain, but have feelings of pain, distress or harm. The authors developed a framework looking at eight criteria to evaluate the evidence of sentience and assessed over 300 publications. They also investigated the potential welfare implications of current commercial practices. The eight criteria that they used included such things as having flexible self-protective behaviours in response to injury and threat associative learning that goes beyond habitual and sensitisation, motivational trade-offs that show a balancing of threat against opportunity for reward, and behaviour that shows the animal values local anaesthetics or analgesics when injured. If the animal gained high or very high confidence on seven or more of the criteria, it was deemed that there was very strong evidence that the animal was sentient. Octopuses gained high or very high confidence in all but one of the criteria and so are categorised as sentient. This also applies to squid and cuttlefish and strong evidence of sentience in crabs was also found. Farming octopuses is not easy and scientists are concerned about the welfare issues that will arise in trying to do so on a commercial scale. A female octopus lays thousands of eggs and after weaving them together into strands they will tend them until they hatch. Depending on the species, that could be weeks, months or even a year. During this time, the female does not eat much and spends her time keeping her eggs aerated by blowing over them or clear of algae by cleaning them. At the end of this brooding period, nearly all octopus young hatch at once. However, only a couple will survive to adulthood, so hatching mortality in the wild is huge. Hatching mortality is also high in captivity. For the common octopus, Octopus vulgaris, survival rates are at around 30 to 40% at day 40 and less than 10% by day 60. This is due to problems with temperature, water quality and nutrition. 
Octopuses cannot tolerate a wide fluctuation in the salinity and the temperature of the water and it needs to be highly oxygenated. Strict monitoring of temperature and levels of oxygen, pH, nitrates and salinity are needed along with the quick removal of any ink emitted by the octopus, as the ink can coat the gills of the octopus and cause asphyxiation. Temperature will impact feeding, growth and lifespan, whilst changes in salinity can cause blanching of the skin and excessive inking and can lead to death. Poor water quality can lead to infections, respiratory issues, agitation, increased incidence of inking and jetting, and death. Poor nutrition has been identified as one of the primary problems in the establishment of large-scale aquaculture. The hatchings need a vast amount of live prey, such as shrimp and other crustacea, which can be difficult to obtain. The adults are also carnivorous, and although research is being carried out to develop suitable alternatives to live prey, there is little understanding about the metabolism and nutritional needs to be able to formulate complete diets. There is concern that the octopuses, both as hatchlings and as adults, will not thrive on the food sources provided and will experience a range of welfare harms such as hunger and nutritional and metabolic diseases. There is also concern that the type of environment provided for farmed octopuses will be detrimental to their psychological welfare. Octopuses have complex behaviours and need a lot of cognitive stimulation, not something that is found in the tightly controlled and monotonous environments of a typical farm. In captive environments, octopuses regularly show signs of stress such as irregular swimming patterns, depression, agitation and anorexia. Stress has even resulted in the consumption of their own limbs. Another problem of a captive environment is the lack of shelter. Because the octopuses are soft-bodied and vulnerable to predators in the wild, they use rapid retreat strategies when they feel threatened, retreating into caves and crevices. Octopuses in captivity that have not had adequate shelter provided for have shown fear and stress, resulting in signs of depression and anorexia. A common startled or fear response for octopuses is high-speed jetting away from the threat, which in captivity can result in collision with the tank sides and consequently injury to the soft skin. These cuts often don't heal well and can become infected. The infection can then spread to other tissue and death can occur. There may also be other environmental requirements that we have no idea about, as octopuses have different sensory abilities to humans. For example, they can see polarised light and they have chemo and mechano sensory cells in their arms which help them explore their environment using a taste by touch system, which enables them to respond to chemicals and movement produced by their prey. Another consideration is that many species of octopus are solitary and need to be housed individually. If they are not, then they become stressed and spend less time resting and feeding. They can become aggressive and cannibalism has been known to occur. Ultimately, the octopus need to be killed for consumption and there are various different slaughter methods being used on fishing vessels in European waters. They include clubbing, slicing the brain, reversing the mantle of the octopus and asphyxiation in a suspended net bag, none of which are humane methods for a sentient animal. The only recommended method of humane slaughter for cephalopods is a terminal dose of anaesthetic, which then makes the octopus inedible by humans. So, at the moment, there is no method of slaughter which is humane and in which the octopus can then be consumed safely. I do hope that there is something which stops the opening of the octopus farm in Spain. It seems that us humans are hell-bent on eating any species, no matter what the cost to that animal or the environment. Why can't we just not eat them? They are not a source of protein keeping millions from starving. They are a so-called delicacy, like shark fin soup. I have signed a petition in the UK to bring this issue to the attention of the UK government, although it is only to ban imports of farmed octopuses into the UK. Perhaps other countries have a similar system to get an issue debated in their equivalent of Parliament, and perhaps you could sign their petition. If all countries banned it, then octopus farming ceases to be financially viable, and perhaps we can then help prevent the suffering of these truly amazing creatures.